going to learn an algebra skill. It's how to simplify square roots. To do that, we have to start by talking about the square root product property. It begins like this. For all, remember the upside down A means for all non-negative real numbers. This funky looking R stands for the set of real numbers. And we're going to call them A and B. All right, watch what happens here. The square root of A times the square root of B can be written as this. You can write one radical symbol and smooch them all over, smooch that radical right over the A times the B. It's just that little square roots being multiplied equal to one big square root with the product underneath. And that gives us a tremendous amount of power to simplify things. Alrighty, now let's just take a look at a couple of examples. Here's the first one. Example one. Simplify the radical, the square root of 50. Okay, now we want to see if there are any perfect square factors of 50. And if so, we'll remove them because perfect squares can be square rooted to down to whole numbers. All right, so let's just make a little list of perfect squares. One to the second power, of course, is one. Two to the second power is four. Three to the second power is nine. Four to the second power is 16. Five to the second power is 25. Six to the second power is 36. These numbers right here are all what we call perfect squares. And if any of these could be factors of 50, we can go ahead and uh, square root them out. Well, it turns out that this one right here, 25, is a factor of 50. So we can write the square root of 50 like this. The square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Because 25 times 2 is equal to 50, and the square root product property allows us to split this up into two little pieces, like this. Okay, now the square root of 25 is 5. Nice, simple 5. And we're going to take that 5 times the square root of 2, which is not a nice, simple number. This is an irrational decimal that goes on forever and ever and ever, never terminates or repeats. So, the square root of 50 is exactly equal to 5 times the square root of 2, or 5 square roots of 2. These forms right here are known as exact forms. Exact. So if you're ever asked to give the exact value and you have a radical that's an irrational number, you have to leave it under the radical sign in order for it to be exact. If you were to use a, de or a calculator on this, you will get a decimal approximation of the right, product. Let's take a look at another example. Here is something that could very easily be a solution to a quadratic equation, where we have 6 plus a radical all over another number. Now, how do we simplify this? Okay. Well, we've got to remember here that this denominator is being divided into both parts of the numerator. So this is going to be equivalent to 6 over 2 plus the square root of 28 over 2. Now, 6 over 2 reduces very nicely to a just plain old 3. Now, let's take a look here at this. 28. That is not a perfect square, but does it perhaps have a perfect square factor? Well, over here we have our perfect squares, a few of them listed. And by George, by Jingo, it looks to me like 4, which is a factor of 28, can be factor or can be square rooted out. Let's take a look. It would be tw the square root of 28 can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7, because 4 times 7 is 28. And then, of course, that is divided by 2. So we're going to then have 3 plus the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 7 all over 2. Now, look at this. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 
All right, and 1 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 7. So this simplifies to 3 plus the square root All right, let's of take a look seven. another example. This time we want to assume that P and R are positive and you're being asked to multiply the square root of 7P times the square root of 7R and to simplify the result. All right, well we know that when we're taking two square roots and we're multiplying them together I can actually condense these together and put it underneath one big square root. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that would be 7p times 7r. Well now let's see here. Multiplication is commutative so I can take 7 times 7 and get 49. So that would be 49 times p times r. Well by George by Jingo, look, we have a perfect square. So this can be written as the square root of 49 times the square root of p times r. This one is nice. That will square root out to 7. And 7 times the square root of pr can be written like this. 7 square roots of pr. So there is your product in simplified. One final example here. The directions say simplify the square root of 9x squared y squared. Well, as we've seen previously, this one product here can be broken down to the uh, square root of its various factors. So, we could have the square root of 9 times the square root of x to the second times the square root of y to the second. This is equivalent to that. It's just two different ways of writing the exact same thing. This one will root nicely, this one will root nicely, and this one will root nicely. Here we will get 3, and here we will get x, because the square root of x squared just undoes the squaring, and here we will get y. So 3 times x times y, of course is 3x1.